focused on you. And we begin today at noon with breaking news. Fire crews responded to the Gateway Arch about 90 minutes ago after a report of smoke coming from the monument. According to firefighters, it involved the elevator in the north leg. Representatives for the arch tell us the smoke was coming from a control panel for the tram doors. The visitor center closed for a short time as crews shut down the panel. It's since reopened. Rides have resumed. We'll continue to monitor the situation for you and bring you updates as we get more information. Developing at noon, police in St. Louis investigating an officer-involved shooting. Thanks for being here. I'm Kay Quinn. What started as a group of minors attempting to steal a car ended with a shootout with an off-duty officer. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay was on the scene this morning. She joins us with new information. Mercedes. Kay, we just learned the off-duty officer involved in the incident has been with the department for 13 years. The suspect in custody is 15 years old. Neighbors I spoke to woke up to the gunshots right outside their door early this morning. Now, police tell me they believe six minors in total were involved in this gun battle, and right now, all but the one suspect is still on the loose. Police tell us the incident happened just after two this morning on Hartford near Alfred. One of the juveniles trying to leave the scene fired shots at an off-duty officer after the officer interrupted them breaking into cars attempting to steal one. Now, that's when the officer returned fire and took one of the minors into custody. The other suspects left the scene and police are actively looking for them right now. Police say the officer wasn't injured and they believe none of the juveniles were either. I spoke with police and neighbors about this upsetting trend of young kids getting wrapped up in crime. Any age, uh, gunfire is not good. So uh, all I can say is I'm glad nobody got struck this morning. Nobody was injured and we just have to uh, investigate and see if we can identify the other juveniles involved. The youth shouldn't be involved in anything like that. Well, nobody really, but then the fact that more and more kids are becoming more prone to do those types of things is just sad. The force investigative unit is handling this ongoing investigation. Police told me one of the other cars the juveniles were driving in this morning was recovered in the first district and was reported stolen. While the miners this morning were trying to steal the cars, police say this is a good reminder to tell everyone to lock their car doors and don't leave anything in plain sight. All right, thank you, Mercedes. An overnight shooting and a quick trip in South St. Louis leaves a man dead and a security guard injured. It happened at the station on Gravoy. Police say an altercation between the man and the guard led to the shooting. The Homicide Division has taken that case. We're also getting information about a shooting in the Metro East. Police in O'Fallon telling us two people were hit by stray bullets during an altercation at St. Clair Bowl on Old Collinsville Road last night. The shooter left the scene before officers arrived, and earlier in the evening, police responded to a large fight inside the business involving juveniles. There were no reports of serious injuries. Right now, no word on whether the shootings and the fight are connected. Check out the scene in Fenton. A brush fire forced several people to evacuate their homes last night. These are photos that were sent to us overnight. The fire sparked in an area between two subdivisions on Saline Road. No word on what caused it. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office had deputies on standby to help anyone who needed it. Firefighters have that fire under control. Yeah, here at 1203 on a still windy day, you know, one of the reasons yesterday that the fact that we had wind gusts over 40 miles an hour and the fact that everything's so dry, we have hardly had any rain since the end of January. So everything is really dry for early March for sure. Now gusts over 30 miles an hour right now still could pose a fire threat, but overall, one of the things that has at least kept our fire threat at bay is the fact that it actually is a little humid. Did you see that this morning? Get up and there was a pretty good amount of dew or moisture at the surface. I mean, it's it's that's one of the reasons we're starting to see more clouds settle in as we look outside. Now, especially off to the east, clouds have increased significantly versus this morning where it's 75 degrees. We've got a south breeze at 22 miles an hour, but it's actually a little humid outside, so good for fire danger. But we're also going to see rain chances start to pick up, especially closer to midnight. And that's what we want to highlight here ahead. As I think most of your day is dry, we'll talk about those rain chances, whether or not any severe weather settling in, and when the cold air works its way back in as well. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you, Gary. Today, jury selection continues in the trial of Daniel Riley. He's the driver of the car that crashed in downtown St. Louis, causing Tennessee teenager Janae Edmondson to lose her legs. Opening statements are expected tomorrow. Janae and her father plan to testify tomorrow. Five on your sides, Christine Byers will be in the courtroom all week long, 
Look for her reports on air on KSDK.com and on the Five on Your Side app. You may remember this scene. Historic rainfall in the summer of 2022 caused flooding all throughout the area. That water overwhelmed the Metrolink stations at Skinker and Big Bend in University City. Well, today, those stations are back open. Five on Your Side's Megan Kernan shows us how the schedule is being impacted. As you can see on the sign behind me, the westbound platforms have officially reopened here at the University City Big Bend Station and the Skinker Station after the flooding nearly a year and a half ago. This reopening will help hundreds of people who use the metro every day to get where they need to go. For nearly two years, people were using the eastbound platform to board both westbound and eastbound. Today, Blue Line passengers will need to use the westbound platforms at these stations and will no longer need to cross to the other platform. A new Metrolink schedule will also be implemented in an effort to keep services going. If you're using the Metro today, your commute will likely be impacted. That's why it's important to go online and check these schedule changes. We have a link on KSDK.com in the As Seen on TV section. Reporting in St. Louis, Megan Kernan, five on your side. The owners of the Woodsport Golf Course in Troy, Missouri, are assessing the damage after a clubhouse fire, a very large fire. The Lincoln County Fire Chief says it all started somewhere in the attic of the clubhouse. Firefighters kept that fire from spreading to the wedding venue despite the windy conditions. Staff and guests made it out without injury. For the third time this year, firefighters in Cahokia Heights came under gunfire at the firehouse. An assistant fire chief at the Camp Jackson Fire Department says a bullet hit the station Saturday. She says someone fired hundreds of shots over a long period of time. No reports of any injuries. It's really scary when you don't know where it's coming from because I worry about our firemen, I worry about the community. We operate on very little budget. The fire department itself doesn't get much money and we own this building so we're responsible for any of the repairs. We reached out to the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department to see if they had any information on the shots fired. We have not heard back. Still ahead, a major ruling from the Supreme Court about Donald Trump's run for president. Why it affects tomorrow's Super Tuesday primaries. And how do voters feel about the presidential candidates and their ability to lead? The concerning results of a new poll.